Hi, Wes and Sam. It's Mom. If you watch this, I'm here. Hope you're doing okay and you're happy. What the hell do you say to a camera, huh? saying to Jesus, you cannot serve both God and money. Jesus now told this story to, the, to his disciples. A rich man hired an accountant to handle his affairs, but soon a rumor went around that the accountant was thoroughly dishonest. So his employer called him in, called him in and said, what's this I hear about your stealing from me? Get your report in order, for you are to be dismissed. The accountant thought to himself, now what? I'm through here, and I haven't the strength to go out and dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. I know just the thing. And then I'll have plenty of friends to take care of me when I leave. So he invited each one who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, How much do you owe him? My debt is 850 gallons of olive oil, the man replied. Yes. Here is the contract you signed, the accountant told him. Tear it up and write another one for half that much. And how much do you owe him? he asked the next man. A thousand bushels of wheat, was the reply. Here, the accountant said, take your note and replace it with one for only 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the citizens of this world are more clever in dishonesty than the godly are. But shall I tell you to act that way? To buy friendship through, through cheating? Will this ensure your entry into everlasting home in heaven? No, for unless you are honest in small matters, you won't be in large ones. If you cheat even a little... You won't be honest with the greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches and riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's money, why should you be entrusted with money of your own? For neither you nor anyone else can serve two masters. You will hate one and show loyalty to the other, or else the other way around. You will be enthusiastic about one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who dearly loved their money, naturally scoffed at all this. Then he said to them, You wear a noble, pious expression in public, but God knows your evil hearts. Your pretense brings your, you honor from the people, but it is an abomination in the sight of God. Until John the Baptist began to preach the laws of Moses and the messages of the prophets were your guides, but John introduced the good news that the kingdom of God would come soon. And now eager multitudes are pressing in. But that doesn't mean that the law has lost its force, even in the smallest point. It is as strong and unshakable, and unshakable as heaven and earth. So anyone who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. There was a certain rich man, Jesus said, who was splendidly clothed and lived each day in the mirth, in mirth and luxury. One day Lazarus, a diseased beggar, was laid at his door. As he lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the beggar died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham in the place of the righteous dead. The rich man also died and was buried, and his soul went into hell. There, in torment, he saw Lazarus, Lazarus in the far distance with Abraham. Father Abraham, he shouted, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here, if only only to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So, now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is great chasm separating us, and anyone wanting to come to you from here is stopped at its edge, and no one over there can cross to us. Then the man said, O oh, Father Abraham, then please send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers to, to warn them about this place of torment, lest they come here when they die. But Abraham said, The scriptures have warned them again and again. Your brothers can read them any time they want to. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, they won't bother to read them. But if someone sent to them from the dead, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will turn from their sins. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even though someone rises from the dead.
Luke 16, 1 through 31. There will, all, there will always be temptations to sin, Jesus said one day to his disciples. But woe to the man who does the tempting. If he were thrown into the sea with a huge rock tied to his neck, he would be far better off than facing the punishment in store for those who harmed these little children's souls. I am warning you, rebuke your brother if he sins, and forgive him if he is sorry, even if he wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, forgive him. One day the apostles said to the Lord, We need more faith, tell us how to get it. If your faith were the size of, size of a mustard seed, Jesus answered, it would be large enough to uproot that mulberry tree over there and send it hurtling into the sea. Your command would bring immediate results. When a servant comes in, in from plowing or taking care of the sheep, he doesn't just sit down and eat, but first prepares his master's meal and serves his supper before he eats his own, and he is not even thanked, for he is merely doing what he is supposed to do. Just so, if, you're, you mere, if you merely obey me, you should not consider yourselves worthy of praise, for you have simply done your duty. Luke 17, 1-10